In the last session, we talked about word stress. And we mentioned that a particular syllable in an English word stands out from its neighbors. And therefore, we have to say that syllable with extra breath force. That means much louder than its neighbor. And that's an important aspect of pronouncing an English word. But in our day-to-day -day conversation or communication, we speak sentences. And when we speak a sentence, we have the same kind of principle applying when we speak a sentence. Some words in the sentence are stressed, and some other words are left unstressed. And we have to know this, that we cannot stress every word of the sentence. Every word of the sentence doesn't get the equal weight when we pronounce a sentence. If you have a sentence like this, there are eight words in this sentence, but all words are not stressed. The normal way of saying this sentence is, I'm going to Delhi in the morning. I'm going to Delhi in the morning. And when you listen to this very carefully, you notice the stresses are coming here on going and Delhi and in the morning. I'm going to Delhi in the morning. We do not say, I am going to Delhi in the morning. That's not the way we say this. So in quick speech, certain words are highlighted and certain words are left unstressed. In actuality, they are weakened. What are the words which are stressed? This is a main verb and this is a noun and this is also a noun. And what are the words which are left unstressed? We have a pronoun, we have an auxiliary verb, we have a preposition, preposition, and the article. So this is the normal pattern in English. In a neutral context, nouns, main verbs, adjectives, and adverbs are stressed generally. And the words which are unstressed are articles, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, conjunctions, and pronouns. The analogy is that of a wall. A wall is built up of bricks and cement. The bricks actually carry the weight of the wall, and the cement only helps to link up these bricks. In the same way, in a sentence also, these words, nouns, main verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, these are brick words which carry the main weight. That means they actually convey the meaning that is intended. And the other words are cement words like pronouns, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, articles, etc. And this is how the rhythm of English is maintained. Some words are stressed and some words are left unstressed. And these words which are stressed are known as content words. And the words which are left unstressed are structural words or form words. The content words are nouns, main verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. The structural words or form words are pronouns, articles, auxiliary verbs, prepositions, and conjunctions. Now let's take another example. Supposing we have a sentence like this. The normal way of saying this is, I'll take my dog to the park. If you watch very carefully, the stresses are on take, dog, and park. I'll take my dog to the park. And what has happened is, the other words like I'll, my, to, and the are weakened. They are not said in their full forms, but they are weakened. So they say, I'll, my, to, the. So the stresses are here, main verb, noun, and another noun here. And this is the pattern which is generally followed, and we have to keep this in mind. Now the important thing for us to note is, what happens to the structural words in such a situation? How are they weakened? What is the strong form and what is the weak form? Let's get to know that. Let's start with the articles. The letter A, which is 
the indefinite article, we know that. The full form of pronouncing this is A. And when we say the alphabet also, we say A, that the first letter of alphabet is A. But in most cases in our day-to-day -day conversations, it will be pronounced A. Uh. That's all. It, a is weakened into a. So we say a book. We don't say a book. We don't say this is a book. This is a book. A. A pen. A room. A college. A university. A. That's all. Make sure that in most cases it is the weak form that is used for the indefinite article A. Let's take the, the other form of indefinite article N, which is used before vowels. The strong form is an, but the weak form is an. This is an apple. We don't say this is an apple, not an, but an. This is an apple, an. You see how it is, an is weakened into an, because these are in unstressed positions in a sentence. Let's take the definite article, the. The strong form is the, but the weak form is the before vowels and the before consonants. And note this, when the definite article comes before a word beginning in a vowel sound, then we say the. For example, the ink. But when the definite article comes before a word beginning in a consonant, then we say the pen. It's a very simple rule to follow. It is the before a vowel, but the before a consonant. Many people get confused about this and they either keep using the all the time or they keep using the all the time, but this is the pattern. The before a vowel sound and the before a consonant. The ink, the pen, the apple, the mango, the and the. These are the weak forms of the definite articles. And in normal day-to-day -day conversation, maybe Practically all the times, this is the weak form which exists. The strong form is used only for contrast, for emphasis. For example, if somebody says, Manmohan Singh is a Prime Minister of India, then you correct him and say, Manmohan Singh is the Prime Minister of India. You see, for contrast, meaning, that he is the only one, he is the only Prime Minister of India. It is not A, but it is the. Only for such contrast, we use the strong form of the articles. Otherwise, it always, it is the weak form which is used. Let us take up the next category of uh, structural words, that is, an auxiliary verb like a r e r the strong form is a but the weak form is a in a sentence like the boys are playing see the boys are playing the boys a r e is pronounced a that's all the boys are playing the boys are it is not the boys are playing but the boys are playing the girls are coming the girls are coming, the girls are, not are, not the girls are coming, but the girls are coming, girls are, uh, that's all, that's the weak form. Let's take another auxiliary verb, the common one, is. The strong form is, is, but the weak form is, is, or sometimes just z, or sometimes just s. It's of no use when we say that. It's of no use, it's, you see, it is not, it is, not the full form. Even if it is written, it and is as separate words, it's pronounced, it's, it's of no use. It's just a sir, 
instead of is. John's a good boy. John's. John is a good boy. Is is reduced to z. John's a good boy. John's just a z. So these are the weak forms which generally exist in connected speech as auxiliary verbs. And uh, we have, let's take another one, can. The strong form is can. The weak form is can. Or sometimes just hmm. I can do it. I don't say I can do it. It is unstressed and therefore weakened into I can do it. If you use the strong form and say I can do it, it conveys the meaning that I am able to do it but I will not do it. That is the meaning that is conveyed. It is a very special context. But in an ordinary context, I can do it. I can, can. We just use can, weak form. And similarly, the other auxiliary verbs also. Will, am, could, would, had, all these auxiliary verbs are weakened. Let's take another one, have, let us say. Strong form is have, but the weak form is have, or just have sometimes. I've done it. I've not, I have done it, but I've done it. I've just, woo, that's all, weak form. So weakening these auxiliary verbs, because they are not stressed in connected speech, is important. They are said quickly, they are weakened, and they are not given any weight at all. The weight is given to content words. Now let's take the next category of structural words. Let's take prepositions, a very frequently used preposition for. The strong form is for, but the weak form is for. Is this for me? We don't say, is this for me? Not for me, but for me. For me, weakened. For, weakened into for. And then take another one, two. Strong form is two, weak form is two before a vowel and t before a consonant. We use two before a vowel sound and t before a consonant sound. I want to ask you, I want to ask you to ask because the vowel is vowel, uh, the, the next sound is a vowel sound, we use two and I want to go. Go, g is a consonant sound and therefore we say to, to go, I want to go. And take another very important preposition, OF, very commonly mispronounced word in English. The strong form is of, but the weak form is of. A cup of tea, a cup of, of. it is not a cup of tea. Give me a cup of tea, no. Cup of tea, cup of, of, weakened into of. If you, and remember that both in the strong as well as in the weak form, there is no fur sound here in this word. It is a ver sound. It is not off, but it is of. The moment you say off, you are referring to this word, which is a different word, off. And then you are off the mark, if you say that. But this is not what we have. This is not the preposition that we are talking about. It is the of. And this applies to other prepositions also, like from in and so on. But one thing we have to keep in mind is both auxiliary verbs as well as prepositions, when they occur in the final position of the sentence, they are said with the strong form. At the end of the sentence, it is not the weak form which is used, but it is the strong form which is used. Take for example, what's this for? What's this for? You see, I have used a strong form. We don't say, what's this for? That is wrong. Because the preposition is coming at the end of the sentence, it takes the full form, strong form. What's this for? Where to? Where to? And so on. 
Same is the case with the auxiliary verbs also. When the auxiliary verbs come at the end of a sentence, they take the strong form. Be as you are, stay as you are, strong form A-R-E, you see? Do it if you can, do it if you can, can coming at the end, so it takes a strong form. You can't say, do it if you can. No, not at that point. There it has to be a strong form. And let's take conjunctions, which we also use liberally in connected speech. Take a very commonly used conjunction like A and D, and. We rarely use the full form and in connected speech. But people who are not aware of, aware of this, they just go by the spelling. They stress and and use the full form. The full form is and. That is the strong form. But we rarely use it except for contrast. The weak form is and or sometimes just mm, that's all. Bread and butter. When we say that, bread and butter. It is not bread and butter. This is, when people say, this is my bread and butter, what they mean is, this is this is my bread and butter. Bread and, we are just using mm sound there for the strong form and. Fish and chips. Fish and chips, up and down. He was moving up and down, up and just, mm, that's all, up and down. And you know, in the marketplace, the businessmen have captured this pronunciation and they name their agencies and they write it like this, pick and move, shop and save, sea and sand, and so on. And they write it just within because this is how we pronounce it. A strong form is used only for contrast not otherwise. For example, if somebody asks you, would you like bread or coffee? Then you say, for contrast, I want bread and coffee. Only in such a situation, for contrast, saying that it is not a choice, but I want both of them. So there, for the sake of conveying that meaning, you stress and, and then use the full form. Take the other one, O-R, another conjunction. The full form is O, but the weak form is A. Uh. I'll do it today or tomorrow. See, I'll do it today or uh, tomorrow. I don't say, I'll do it today or tomorrow. No, I'll do it today or tomorrow. Today A, uh, just A, uh, weak form. But again, like this one, when you want to bring about a contrastive meaning, when you are contrasting or with and, then you stress it and use a full form. Let's take another one, conjunction as. And the strong form is as. But weak form is as. In phrases like as well as. When we say that as well as, we are not saying as well as. We are not using the strong form as, but we are using the weak form as, as well as. As soon as he comes, as soon as I am ready, look at that, as soon as, as, weak form, as. As bad as that, as good as that. In such situations, it is generally the weak form which is used. But when this occurs, word initially or so, not in a phrase like this, then it starts with a strong form like, as seen earlier, then it takes a strong form. But in all other cases, it's a weak form. And then we have pronouns like he, she, and I, and so on. So these are the structural words which are left unstressed in connected speech. And because they are not stressed, they are not said with full form or strong form. Invariably, a weak form is used to say this. And this is very crucial to convey the rhythm of English. If you don't maintain this, the language that you speak doesn't sound like English. 
you may be imposing some other rhythm on english the words may be correct the sounds may be correct but it doesn't sound like english for example if i say i am going to delhi in the morning well it's a perfectly grammatical english sentence no doubt but it doesn't sound like english because the rhythm is not maintained i stressed every word in that sentence instead of that if i say i'm going to delhi in the morning that sounds like english because i stressed only the content words delhi and morning and the other words i weakened tied up with the other syllables and that is how characteristic english rhythm is maintained weak forms of structural words are necessary in order to sound the characteristic in order to realize the characteristic rhythm of english stressing the content words and leaving the structural words unstressed gives us the characteristic english rhythm and english is supposed to have a rhythm called stress timed rhythm which is different from the rhythm of indian languages indian languages are supposed to have a rhythm called syllable timed rhythm so english has to be spoken with english rhythm and indian languages have to be spoken with the rhythm of indian languages which is syllable timed rhythm if we impose one rhythm on another language it won't take for example if you try to speak an Indi indian language with english rhythm it sounds very odd same is the case with english if it is spoken with the rhythm of indian languages and another basic difference is in indian languages we try to stress each word almost equally whereas in english we don't stress all the words in a sentence when we say that and this is the basic difference and this has to be kept in mind and that is the basic difference between writing and speech in english we cannot speak as though we write in writing we may write something in two words or three words but in in speech we'll telescope them into one contract contracted forms and unless this is done unless the strong forms are weakened about the structural words our speech doesn't give the flavor of english and this is important for us to keep in mind especially we see that many indian speakers although they have forms like this in writing if you ask them to read it they say i have why is it the apostrophe is used by the writer there to indicate that it is a contracted form so it is not i have but i've 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 done it i've seen it i've not i have i've seen it even if it is written with two words we still collapse it into i've we don't say i have seen it but i've seen it i'll do it for example similarly i written like this two words it's pronounced i'll i'll do it i'll do it tomorrow we don't say i will do it if you say i will do it it has a special meaning it means though it is very difficult for me to do it though i am not authorized to do it i will do it so that is the meaning which is conveyed when you say i will do it but otherwise in a normal situation you say i'll do it for you i'll do it for you i'll i've similarly i'm it is not i am but it is i'm i'm fine so these are the weakened forms which we have to keep in mind and similarly another words which people generally mispronounce is didn't it is not did not even in writing if it is shown this way people read it with full form with two separate words and say he did not it is not did not it is didn't didn't wouldn't shouldn't couldn't 
those are the weakened forms. The not is weakened into nt in these words. And it has to be said that way. Don't use the full form because in day-to-day -day living language, in spoken language which we use in daily conversation and interaction, it is these forms which are prevalent and we should get used to it. We should not use the strong forms, we should not the, use the full form unless it is stressed for contrast. So we have to keep this in mind and unless we maintain this, keep the structural words very carefully and try to weaken them, we will not get the characteristic English rhythm and it will be sounding very funny to others. If you have a word like, be careful here, is it a university or an university? Because people go by the spelling and they say, this is a vowel and therefore it should be an. Now here is a crucial point, that is, it is not the letter, it is the sound which you should look for. What is the sound in the initial position of this letter? It is a consonant sound, u. Y is a consonant sound. Since this is a consonant sound, it takes a, a university. It is not an university, it is a university. Similarly, take this, H-O-U-R, hour. If you go by the spelling, you will say it is a hour because it is a consonant. But this is consonant letter. The sound here is a vowel sound, our. Since it is a vowel sound, you use an, and therefore you say an hour. And also very commonly mispronounced word is this, same thing, unique. If you go by the letter, you say an unique. But you have to go by the pronunciation where you have a consonant and therefore it is a unique. It is a unique opportunity, not an unique. It is a unique op opportunity. Though the sound is important for us, not the spelling. And similarly, let's take this degree. Do you say I have a MA degree or I have an MA degree? Is it a or an? As I said, you go by the sound. The sound is a vowel sound, M and A. M, the vowel sound, and therefore N. I have an MA degree. I have an MBBS degree. The sound is important, not the letter. So this is what should govern our pronunciation when we speak in English, especially when we pronounce the articles.